now we're moving on to what is such a hot topic these days, and that is social networking. And after speaking to our next uh, speaker and learning so much about what's going on in this space, you almost have to kind of throw out the rule book um, when it comes to social networking for health. Uh, there's, different, there's different areas of commitment, different areas of trust, and uh, there, there's just a lot of different things that you have to consider when it comes to health. It's not as traditional as, you know, let's just Let's just you know share pictures and advice and all that good stuff. So um, today we get to learn from Ron Gutman, the founder and CEO of HealthTap. He is responsible for the company's innovation, vision, and product. HealthTap is an interactive health network dedicated to improving your health and well-being. They personalize. Uh, they personalize health information for you and provide free online and mobile answers from thousands of the best physicians in the United States. So I'd like to welcome Ron Goodman. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, so I'm really happy to be here uh, and see all of you. And uh, I'll talk today about, uh, not about health tab, but about something that uh, I'm very, very passionate about which is uh, trust, transparency, uh, and meritocracy in healthcare. And, and uh, like we heard be before, in healthcare, unlike in other places, uh, social interaction is a little bit def different. And let's talk about this uh, for a little bit. So uh, a little bit about myself. I'm uh, the founder and CEO of HealthTap. Uh, and HealthTap basically has today more than 11,000 physicians in 112 specialties and from all 50 states that will answer any health questions that you have for free in minutes. And everyone is asking us, how are we able to do it? And it's based on three uh, very important pillars, trust, transparency, and meritocracy. So let's look a little bit in the, in the background uh, of what we're doing. Uh, when we started the company about a little bit more than a year and a half ago, uh, we started uh, trying to look into you know, what patients really need. And you know, I have quite a bit of experience in this industry. I started my uh, journey at Stanford uh, about seven and a half years ago doing research into personalized health and how to engage people in health and well-being. Uh, we built the Be Well at Stanford uh, program that engaged the entire population, staff, faculty, and students around health and well-being. And what we realized about while doing that, and after that by building a company that became one of the largest health sites on the internet, uh, that what people really want when it comes to health is really answers to their health questions. And think about it this way. Every interaction in healthcare starts with a question, with a concern, with something that you want to understand, something that you want to solve for. So they want questions. So what do people do today? Well, do people go to doctors? Do you guys go to, doc to a doctor for any health question that you have? Uh, and you say, well, maybe if I have a, sp a very general question, uh, I'll go and see a generalist, but what if I have a very specific question about something? Would I uh, just schedule an appointment with a specialist? Well, it takes an average of 20 days to schedule an appointment with a specialist in this country. So generalist, you can see within a couple of days, pr pretty much, but a specialist is about 20 days. So it takes a lot of time to get an appointment with, with, uh, with doctors. So what do people do instead? Well, 70% of us don't have same-day access to our doctor. So how many of you can just say today, hey, I have a problem or I have a problem with my child and I want to see a doctor today immediately? Very few of you. 60% of us want more time to spend with our doctor and explain to them what, they, what we have and what we want to understand better. And 50% of us, more than 50% of us, what, want our doctors to know us better because in the conveyor belt culture of giving treatment to patients, doctors in this country spend about eight minutes with the patient, and that's not enough time to get to know the patients better. So where do patients go? Well, I'm sure that most of you guys, let me just show of hands, how many people here use the internet for health information? Just raise your hand if you do. They're pretty much everyone. So, you know, 80% of us use the internet for health information. It's a really, really huge category. There are more than 1.4 billion searches on health every month on Google alone. So we are using the internet for health information. So it's pretty much solved. So if we can't get access to doctors immediately, if we have a health question and we have the internet, we can just go there and get a solution. Is this true? So uh, 
This is a study that was published just before we uh, started HealthTap uh, in 2010 by Pew Internet. And the researchers asked the, the subject about how they use the internet for health information. And this was one of the first questions, and most, one of the most important ones, which asked how helpful is the health information that you find on the internet. Most of us use the internet for health information. How helpful it is. The researchers gave the subject four options. Very helpful, somehow helpful, not so helpful, and no help at all. And, you know, this, I think the results talk for themselves. About, they broke the study into two parts. People with chronic conditions and people without chronic conditions. People without chronic conditions, 48% of them said that the health information that they found on the internet of, is of no help at all. 59% of people with chronic conditions said no help at all. So what's missing? We conducted a lot of research when we saw this study and took all the data that we had from working with patients on the internet and we understood that one thing was missing, or more than one thing was missing, the one thing that most people cited when we asked them why you do not like the health information that you find on the internet was trust. People, did not, people said we have a lot of health information out there from many, many sources, but we don't know who to trust. I'm sure that most of you had this experience of going to the internet, having some, a problem, some symptoms, something that you're, not, you're concerned about, but you don't know how to solve it, and let's do some research around it. And you find a ton of information from multiple sources, and it's conflicting. And you, you have a, a, a little headache, and all of a sudden, in like four clicks or less, it's a brain tumor. And you're not sure if it's right or wrong, and who to trust, who not to trust. So what's missing? And we ask people what's missing, and most people said, we want something trustworthy. And we asked them, what do you trust? And they said, we trust our physicians. So we went on the internet and tried to figure out uh, where are physicians on the internet? Where do, they, where do physicians congregate? And we realized that health sites on the internet are mostly media sites. And I'm sure that most of you had the experience of going on the internet looking for health information and, and basically finding a lot of ads, a lot of health ads popping at you from all kinds of health sites. Or even worse, go, going to all these discussion boards where patients talk with one another about how to solve health problems, right? And the worst that I, we saw at the beginning, we started health up with pediatricians and obstetricians, with pregnant women and new moms. And one of the forums that, uh, that I was shown by one of the moms had actually a few moms talking about uh, their babies with stomach ache. And one of the moms said, ah, I have a great solution for a baby with stomach ache. Whenever my baby has a stomach ache, I'll give him Gatorade. And I don't know how many physicians are in this room, but electrolytes and babies don't work together really well. It's actually pretty dangerous, right? And that was her opinion. I'm sure that she was pretty convinced that this is right, but I mean, this can be dangerous. This is not about recommending your friend to watch a certain movie that if they didn't enjoy it, well, there's not a big problem there, but giving electrolytes to your baby is not a great thing to do. The other place where we find do found doctors was on doctor rating sites, right? So these, all these directories where you can find doctors According to, so who, how many people here use the doctor directory on the internet? Anyone remembers what kind of reviews they found about the doctors? What was the essence of the reviews? Anyone wants to say something? Negative, N negative but okay, negative, but what, what, what were they reviewing? What was, what was the subject matter of the review? The visit, the visit. yeah. The what? Personality. Personality. Waiting, time Waiting time, that's true, bedside manner, more? This is exactly right. It's about the receptionist and if she was or she, he was nice. Is it the decor in the waiting room? It's about bedside manner, the magazines in the waiting room, right? Like, how can we as patients rate our doctors on quality? We don't really have the way of doing it. So what we have is free, immediate, and unlimited access on the internet to health information, but patients find it not trustworthy, not personal, and of unknown quality. What we have in the real world with real physicians is trusted, personal, and high quality information from real physicians, but it's costly, it's not immediate, it's time consuming, and it's scarce. So we ask ourselves, what if doctors actually engage online in the online conversation? What if we could bring physicians not as part of a doctor rating site, right? Not as part of a media site, right? But actually to engage with patients uh, on the internet 
using mobile devices and beyond? What if doctors answered questions? What if they could be curators and identify the best information on the internet for you? And what if, we, if these doctors rate and review each other rather than we as patients rated them on the quality of the care they provide? What if we had doctors rating each other on quality? Wouldn't that be an interesting proposition? If that happened, patients would have trusted information from the first time, again, coming with, from physicians, curated by physicians, and rated by physicians. They had multiple expert opinions, so not just one-sided opinions from this side or the other that may or may not be biased by some commercial purposes, but something that was actually unbiased by physicians that you know who they are and you can decide whom to trust. And they will have improved access to the doctors themselves because once you read about information that they provide, you can actually go and see them and choose and see them in the real world. So some continuum of care that doesn't exist today because today people go to the internet to find health information on a media site or on a message board, but then they need to find a physician that has nothing to do with this information. So it's kind of like a very funny experience. What if it was a continuum? If we had this thing, doctor would have a safe place to build a visible and very strong reputation for themselves. And that's very important because doctors today in the US don't have one place that is safe for them to build reputation. Doctors are not on Facebook, they're not on Twitter, and they are not, for the most part, are not creating their own website because this is not what they do. So there's not a pla no one place for them to build a reputation today. They can be easily found by patients, again, according to their knowledge and not according to the decor in their waiting room. And they can, you can enjoy efficiencies in the process of care because once again, instead of like first finding information, then finding a physician, then going seeing in the real world, you're gonna have a continuum from the minute you have a problem to the minute you actually see a doctor in the real world and get the prescription or the medication or whatever you need, and also some sort of a continuum between doctor visits. You can enjoy the efficiencies in the process of care that we talked about and have access to the to best practices, right? And the most important thing is understanding how to understand what are best practices when doctors engage online. And doctors will also enjoy the recognition they deserve. And this is something that we're hearing from doctors all the time. 11 and a half thousand physicians in our network. And one thing that we're hearing from doctors all the time is there's no place where they get recognized for what they're doing. And that's something really important because they're working really hard. If you look at how doctors engage online, if, if, sorry, if how they engage in the practice of medicine, how many years they go to school, and how much effort they put in being awake all night, in on call, et cetera, you see that there's no place in the, in the whole system that recognizes them for what they're doing. If this happened, we would have interactive health. Real place for us to find the right physicians for us, the right information, but most importantly, engage with them in ways that were not possible before. If we had both of these, we would have trusted, personal, high quality, free, immediate, and unlimited access to physician. And that's the vision that HealthTap is working on. What's the recipe of getting there? I want to share with you a few, way, a few ways in which we thought about this problem and how we got to the point that today, if you go to HealthTap, either online right now, if you are online, or use a mobile device and use one of our mobile apps, you'll be able to ask any health question that you have right now and get an answer from a US licensed physician for free in minutes. And I'll say it again, for free in minutes. How did we get 11 and a half thousand physicians in 112 specialties in all 50 states to answer your health question for free? And if I, I always like saying that if I had a dime for every person that told me uh, when we started HealthTap that physicians would never do that for free, we would not ever need to raise money for this company again. Because people said physicians would never spend their time answering people's questions for free, and they're definitely not US physicians. And in HealthTap, we have 11,500 US licensed physicians in good standing. And the most important thing to emphasize is that 100% of our physicians are US licensed, and they don't have disciplinary actions against them because we're checking them one by one, and they don't, they're, they're, they don't have malpractice suit, active malpractice suits because we check into that as well. 
So you as consumer, it's very difficult for you to go to each and every one of the state licensing boards and see who are the physicians are actually in good standing, but HealthTap does it for you, and we only admit to the network physicians that are licensed in the United States and are in good standing. How do we do it? And these are the three pillars that I wanted to talk about today, trust, transparency, and meritocracy. Let's start with trust. We, what we're bringing together, as I said, the top trusted experts in the world. That's why we are not admitting yet, although we are getting a lot of requests to, get to have doctors from outside of the US join the network, we're not admitting doctors that are not US licensed physicians. And that, the reason for that is that in the US, we have established relationship with basically all the state licensing boards, and we have the ability to go and see their licenses one by one. And we're doing it in a manual way to make sure that trust is actually intact. To make sure that the doctor that will answer your question is one of the best doctors in the world. And that's really important because remember what people cited as the number one most important thing for them when they looked for health information was trust. And this is why more than 50% of us think that the health information that we found on the internet today is useless. It's because of trust. The second thing is transparency. It's not enough to be trustworthy. It's very important to actually be transparent. How do we think about transparency when it comes to HealthTap? We basically build for every physician on HealthTap what we call a virtual practice. And a virtual practice is a place where a physician can answer questions for the first time ever in the open. So think about yourself when you went to a physician last time. You asked a question, you went into a room, closed the door, then you and the physician, there's really no accountability, and you ask a question and you get answers. On HealthTap for the first time, Physicians, in order to build a reputation, they need to answer their questions in the open. And the interesting thing about that is it's not only open to you as a patient, but it's actually open to other physicians who are watching them. And not only watching them, they're actually rating them. And this is how we're getting into meritocracy. And the most beautiful thing about what's built right now in HealthTap, and it's the most important data that we're receiving right now, comes from building this transparent meritocracy. The number one most used feature on HealthTap today by a doctor is the agree button. Doctors don't only answer questions by patients, but they actually rate each other on quality for the first time ever. Not only on the internet, but elsewhere as well. Systematically, go on HealthTap today, look at the answers, and you see that each and every one of them has certain number of agree from a certain number of physicians. And once you start aggregating these numbers, you basically start to understand what physicians think about each other in terms of their ability to answer your questions on a certain topic. And once we have enough data, which is what we have right now, we don't only build trust scores for the phys individual physician, we actually start building trust score based on certain topics that they have expertise in. So you, for, for you as a consumer, if you need for some reason to have a retina surgery, you don't just need to find an ophthalmologist. You want to find the best retina surgeon in your town. How do you do it today? I'll pause for a second. If you need to get a retina surgery today, how do you know who's the best retina surgeon in San Diego? Your friends, friend, your friends know who is the best then you will start. Okay, let's start with our friend. But do your friends know who's the best retina surgeon in San Diego? My friends don't. <laughs> Yelp. And Yelp rates physicians based on what? What? Yeah, yeah, but how do users rate the physician? Based on what parameters? Do doctors rate other doctors on Yelp? How do we know as users who's the best retina surgeon? In interactive health, we have trusted experts from the medical community. We have transparency of information and its source. And we have access to the very best information and doctors based on the fact that doctors actually share their expertise in the open and being rated by other physicians on their expertise and knowledge, but this is something that we always wanted to do as a society, and we're never able to do it, is bring this transparent meritocracy in front of patients. And I'll tell you a little bit how it works with the mechanics, because every physician on HealthTap has a virtual practice when they answer questions. They answer patient questions that come to them. 
We built pretty amazing technology that knows how to read these questions without reading them using a very robust ontology that we build in a bunch of algorithms that direct the right question to the right physicians that then get the question to their queue and choose which one they want to answer. And guess how they choose what they want to answer? They choose the questions that they want to get well known for. Because for them, it's basically building a reputation on something that they're good at and something that they're passionate about and something that they want to get well known for. So they'll pick and choose the topics or the subtopics that they really want to get known for because they know that when they answer these questions really well, other physicians will come and agree with them. And when other physicians agree with them, their answers will bubble up in the chain, their doc score will go up, and all of a sudden they'll become the most transparent and the most highly rated doctor in San Diego for retina surgery. Because they put the effort into that, and other physicians said, yeah, this is really great knowledge. And more than that, the physician that have the knowledge on who's the best surgeon, not only who answers the best questions, will actually vote them up because it's transparent. A physician will not put their reputation on the stake to vote someone else up if they know they're not a great doctor, even if their answer was a good answer, which is really interesting because the vote itself is transparent. You can track on HealthTap where the vote came from. You can actually see it in the open. So this is pretty amazing. What we're, do, what we're doing basically with HealthTap is democratizing health information. I, I, I like saying that HealthTap will change the world in, ve in very meaningful ways, but we already have started changing the world. In what way? Before HealthTap, all this wealth of health information, this amazing throve of knowledge by the best physicians, the best experts in the world in healthcare was locked in examination rooms, right? It was all lost in one-on-one -on -one interaction between patient and physicians. Doctors are not writers. They were not online writing in media sites. They're definitely not in forums or on Facebook or on Twitter. They're just not there. So their knowledge existed only if you had access to the physician in the, in the meeting in their office. All of a sudden, we have hundreds of thousands of high quality answers by these physicians available to people, not only to the patients of these physicians, and a lot of our physicians are sending their patients to HealthTap to interact with their information before doctor visits, between doctor visits, but more than that, what about all these people in inner cities that don't have access to physicians or have very scarce access to physicians? What about people in rural areas that don't have access to specialists? What about people overseas that don't have access to doctors at all in developing countries? All of a sudden, all of these people have access to the best knowledge in the world from the best physicians in the world in a very scalable way because once they answer the question, it's there forever. And they're not doing it because they're getting paid. They're doing it for the right reason. They're doing it because they want to build a reputation for themselves. So they really care about how they answer the question. They're not just doing it because, oh, they need to answer 30 questions in 30 minutes because they got paid something for it and then they need to go to do something else. They're doing it with a lot of intent because they're being evaluated by their peers. We provide faster, limitless access to these doctors. And once again, this is very scalable. The virtual practices of these doctors are available online all the time, 24-7. And we improve physician-patient relationships. As I said before, lots of doctors now send their patients to HealthTap to interact with them between doctor visits because it's much more scalable than to get phone calls from these patients that ask them questions that actually are not getting reimbursed by insurance companies. But they can continue to maintain these relationships and instead of sending their patient to a website that is bombarded by advertising or by a forum that who knows what the quality of the answers are, are in the forum, they can actually send their patients to their knowledge or to the knowledge that doctors they agree with. Because the beautiful thing about HealthTap is once a doctor agrees with another doctor's answer, this knowledge actually is transferred to their virtual practice with an endorsement to the doctor who created it. And everyone benefits because the doctor who agrees with another doctor actually got some free content that they can share with their patient on their virtual practice. The doctor who created the content benefits because their doc score goes up and their reputation is enhanced. And the user enjoys it because for the first time, if they get seven answers to a certain question, right, there are certain opinions. Sometimes we want to get first opinion, second opinion, third opinion. And as much as we'd like to believe that healthcare is all science, we actually know that a lot of healthcare is still art. So there are a lot of opinions on certain things. So when you get six opinions from physicians, how do you know which of the opinions weighs more? 
this agree system actually helps you figure out where are the answers that the physician community thinks are the best answers out there. What we're building right now, and, and I'm, you know, I'm going to share with you something that has been live in the past few months, which is like a beta experiment of like bringing what we're doing to mobile, is uh, we have several apps uh, that we call HealthTap Express. They're available right now on iPhone, on iPad, on, <clears throat> on uh, Android. Uh, and, and basically, they, they have the, the most basic functionality of HealthTap, which is you can ask a question, uh, you can browse topics, and you can see your questions, and doctors will answer your questions very quickly uh, for free. But that's just, these are like the beta apps. We're about to launch something very, very excited, exciting very, very soon. Uh, but it's the first app ever to connect physicians and patients uh, on, in the mobile world. Why do physicians do it? What do they get, right? So a lot of people ask me, why do physicians do this thing, right? What they can do with HealthTap is connect with patients, get peer recognition, build their online reputation in a safe environment. Once again, this is not Twitter or Facebook. They can save time and money. Doctors in the US are getting paid by the visit and not by the length of the visit. And that means that if they take the questions that are most frequently asked and send their patients to, get, to interact with them before doctor visit, between doctor visit, they can actually save a lot of time, which can help them either create efficiencies and see more patients or just serve their existing patients better, which is the last point that I wanted to make, which is building relationship with the patients in a long-lasting way. What we get as consumers is basically access to doctors. You get access to your doctor or to the best doctors, right, in an app, which is pretty awesome because it's in your hand all the time, 24-7. We get fast, which is what everyone wants. Everyone, if we, when we start doing focus groups at the beginning and trying to understand what is the thing that people really want, they told us we want fast access. When we have a health question, we want to get an answer from a U.S. licensed physician quickly. Right? We add to that another layer, which is doing it for free. None of the doctors on HealthTap is getting paid anything but building the reputation and getting recognition for the answer that they're answering on HealthTap. So you can answer a question, and you get an answer for free. It's absolutely trusted, because these are all US licensed physicians. All of them are in good standing. And it's the highest quality information ever. These are the best US licensed physicians. And it's the right doctor for you because the transparent meritocracy is building for us an opportunity to basically help you find the right doctor for you, not because of the decor in their waiting room, but because of the actual quality of their answers to patients. And one of our investors, Esther Dyson, calls these answer a free sample. It's the first time that you can freely sample how this doctor interacts with patients and not only understand what is the quality of their answer as measured by other physicians, but actually, you can actually sample their attitude. You can actually sa sample their approach to answering questions. You can say, hmm, this physician, I think he's very smart, but he, he look, he's kind of like maybe a little bit snarky for me. Maybe I want to find someone who's warmer and nicer. Or based, maybe I have a set of belief that I want to find a certain type of physician. So I can sample their answer, answers and understand how they approach answering questions, which is a very, very important thing to do. What's coming soon is extremely exciting. I thought that maybe I could share some of these things with you, but unfortunately, I can't yet. Uh, we're waiting for Apple to, uh, to get back to us with some, with some exciting things that are coming very, very soon. Uh, but uh, you know, bear with me uh, in, the next, uh, in the next few days, and uh, I will share with the world something that uh, I believe will be super, super exciting. Uh, on what's, and, and, and the main idea of what the new health tab will be is what's possible to do in a world that physicians are actually, for the first time, interacting with patients using mobile devices in the cloud. What's possible to do when this entire interaction is digital, where there's nothing else that is paper-based, brick and mortar, all these kind of things, but the entire interaction between patients and physicians is digital and happens in the cloud in a mobile device, either in a, in a smartphone, or a tablet device, which a lot of doctors are adopting, what's possible to do when physicians meet patients in the cloud to, to answer the ba most basic question in healthcare, which is, what's going on with me? What can I do about it? And who can help me? 
And I left a little bit of time for questions and answers, and I'm happy to answer any questions that you have. But thank you. Go ahead. Many of us are monitoring the tweet stream, and there's, uh, don't shoot the messenger, there's a lot of skepticism out there. Um, you've heard the expression, those who can do, those who can't teach. And I suspect that uh, the good doctors are busy with their practice in surgery, so what's the incentive for the really good doctor to take how many minutes or hour out of their day to sit answering questions, trying to build a reputation and their practice? Yeah. Thank you. So I think Seinfeld said, those who can't do teach and those who can't teach, teach gym, right? That was the same. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, it's a great question. And, and we, we're pretty amazed by it as well, because again, 11 and a half thousand physicians, and go on health tap, ask a question. You get an answer from some of the best physicians in this country. The physicians who are most engaged in health tap are actually the ones that if you try to schedule an appointment with them, it will take you four months, and it will cost you a lot because they don't even take insurance. And these are the most engaged physicians in health tap. And I think that this is something to do with what my grandfather used to say in the past. He told me, if you want to get something done, give it to the, most, the busiest person. Think about it. So, so I think that what the, the magic there is that the people who are really the best really care about what they're doing and want to provide the best care to everyone out there. And they care about taking their knowledge, and they want to be recognized for it. They're really good in what they're doing. And even if they're working really hard in the real world, they want to make sure that, A, people know what they're creating, but also that they spread their knowledge broadly. Because they have a gift. Healthcare is not just a business, right? What we're doing is beyond just a business. It's really helping other people. And these physicians who are the best physicians, in my mind, are driven, and we learned that, are driven by more than just the business of serving these many patients or the other, is really helping as many people as possible. And they know that their knowledge is available in a very scalable way, not only to build a reputation for their own selves, which is something that is maybe more of self-serving in a way, but their knowledge can be available to millions of people all over the world and save lives in a very scalable way if they do what they are doing on health tap. So to be, answer your question in more detail, reputation and recognition, right? Distribution, which is finding new patients. A lot of doctors on health tap actually find new patients because they're getting great, great reputation on health, on health tap. Uh, uh, improvement in the process of care. They can serve their existing patients better because they can, are available to them before doctor visits. They're available to them in between doctor visits. And here's something that we discovered recently. A lot of doctors come to Health Up right now to see what other great doctors answer their patients. Because before Health Up, there was no one place in the world where doctors could actually listen to the best physicians and how they answer questions. There's a class in med school that's called POM, Practice of Medicine which is where doctors actually learn how to interact with patients, how to answer a question, especially in difficult topics, because doctors are great in interacting with one another in med speak, but then you need to translate it to how patients understand something, right? So they learn that in med school, but once they graduate, there's nothing afterwards. And there's one place in the world where doctors can see the, how does, do the other doctors that answer patients best answer certain questions. So uh, we, this is an unintended consequence, but we are seeing now more and more physicians that come to health up for that. More questions? Yes, in the back. Uh, sorry. Oh, sorry, go ahead. I got it, Mike. No problem. Um, so I'm not as skeptical, and I think your, uh, your funding track record is uh, obviously shows that you're onto something. Uh, three quick questions. What's the average response uh, from a doctor to a question? What's your monetization strategy? And we had a bunch of media companies presenting yesterday. How do you compete with them? The, <laughs> the celebrities and the niche sites. Okay, so re, re, uh, you will remind me, remind me the three of them. So uh, the first one. Average uh, time to question. Average question. So most of questions are asked, answered on health between minutes. So go and answer, uh, ask a question right now. You're going to get an answer very, very quickly. Definitely within a day, unless it's an extremely obscure question. And some of these linger a little bit more. We have, again, doctors now in 112 specialties. We actually even have three physicians who are aerospace medicine physicians. 
So if you ever go to space, you want to ask a question, you can ask on Help Tap. But very, very quickly, you're going to get your answer for free. So that's the answer to your question. In terms of the business model, uh, we were thinking a lot about this thing. I, I think that what, what excites me most is about saving lives and creating for people better access to the best information and the best physicians. Talking about the business, uh, I'm just going to pose a question to people in the audience. So how big do you think is a doctor visit industry in this country, excluding medications, excluding procedures, excluding ER visits, just doctor visits? Anyone has a guess? Just throw a number. Come on. Don. <laughs> how much? 140 million. million. Okay. Per year in the U.S. Now, how much money exchange in head between doctor and patient in the year? In a year? No, 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 number. Actually, dollars per year. Two hundred billion. Okay, more guesses. The quick mathematician, huh? Yeah? Two trillion. Whoa. Yes, it's about three point three trillion dollars in the entire healthcare budget in this country. So according to 2008 numbers, uh, it was $487 billion a year exchanging hands. So it's more than half a trillion dollars a year exchanging hands between uh, doctors and, and patients in just doctor visits. And this is an industry that has been operating the same way in the past, I don't know, 250 years, right? And I think it's really a great opportunity to start bringing some of these conversations. What we discovered by doing research is that 25% of all doctor visits are just a question and an answer. That's not the majority of doctor visits. Actually, 75%, you actually need to be in the, in, in, the, in the room with the physician for whatever it's required. But about 25% of the doctor visits that literally a question and an answer. Right? Is that an opportunity from a business perspective? This, I'll ask you this question. Rather than answer, I'll ask you a question. And the third question was? Uh, how do you think you're going to be affected? <laughs> I mean, uh, we are not a media company. And this is something that I'm very proud of. We're a health technology company. People in health tech are either engineers or product people, designers. We don't have media people in the company, and we don't see ourselves as a media company. So I'm not competing with media companies. We're not doing advertising on health tech. We're not doing all these kind of things that, uh, uh, that are typical to media companies, right? We're a health technology company. We're building an infrastructure for interactive health to take an industry that has been operating the same way in the past 200, 300 years and bring it to the digital age, bring it to the mobile age. We're, bring, we're building the first mobile health platform, a serious mobile health platform that will help people engage with physicians and find the best health information for them. So the short answer to your question, I'm not competing with them, right? I don't think, in general, that healthcare is something that should be dealt with like a Broadway show. I really don't believe in that. Sorry, I mean, this is me. But I believe that healthcare needs to be more serious. We're building technology, we're building infrastructure, and we're building better ability for you to find the best health information for you and the best physician that will provide you better care so you live a healthier, happier life. Is it a quick one? Yes. Okay. Uh, so just um, really quickly, I guess, uh, what, is, uh, what kind of regulatory criteria do you have for the providers? And uh, what's stopping one provider, or I should say providers from gaming the system? So uh, if I'm a provider and she's a provider, I'm gonna agree with all her stuff and then she's gonna agree with all my stuff and my rating goes up. So what, what kind of regulatory uh, guidelines do you have for that? So it's, this, is, this is beautiful to be about the transparent meritocracy because this is open to everyone. When someone, nobody it's himself in a transparent meritocracy can game the system alone because it's all in the open. If you start doing this kind of thing, other physicians, and by the way, the most beautiful thing that I'm seeing right now, I'm super inspired by that. We have this whole group that we call ClubMD. It's not transparent on the side itself, but these are the doctors that are most engaged on health tab. So we created for them like a, what we call a ClubMD. And these are doctors, and back to the question that I was asked before, some of these are some of the most well-known physicians in this country. Really physicians that will take you like weeks or months to get on their, you know, if you want to get to see them, they, they cost a lot of money to see them. And they're the most engaged physicians on HealthTap. And they spend hours on HealthTap every day policing exactly that. And they're not letting anyone, anyone, come up, not only on the, on the physician side, but also on the patient side, they make sure that quality is high. Because they believe it's their own. 
They really care about the quality because they care about what they're doing. So they're the ones that are helping us keep the service and keep what we're doing of the highest quality ever. It's not even us. Once you make it transparent, once you give them tools in hand, they will do the right things because they chose to practice medicine and they're good in what they're doing for the right reasons.